Revelation chapter 3 and 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come unto him. Over these past weeks of isolation, we've been looking at doors, we've been going through doors, and I thought it would be good just to have a study of four doors in the scriptures. The first is found in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 16, and the door of the ark that shall set in the side thereof. This is the door of salvation. Now in verse 5, God reminds us that God saw the wickedness of man that was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And when God looked at that, it grieved God to the heart. But my dear friend, it didn't grieve man, it didn't bother man. But God has a wonderful way of saying, party's over. And so God told Noah that he was going to send a flood to destroy man upon the earth. And God told Noah in mercy to build an ark for the salvation of those that would enter therein. Noah labored and for 120 years warned men and women of that judgment that surely was to come. But you know, there came a day when God said to Noah, come inside, come in. And Noah came in and his family came in and the Bible says God shut that door. You see, my dear friend, here we have the door of salvation. Noah was safely inside the ark, but the sad reality is this. Nobody else wanted to come in because they didn't see their need of coming into that ark. The Lord Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. The door was in the side of the ark and Jesus Christ, his side was opened. His blood was shed for your salvation and mine. The second door is the door of security. In Exodus chapter 12 and verse seven, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two, two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses. And here we find indeed that the children of Israel are in bondage in Egypt. God is going to deliver them. He tells Pharaoh, let my people go. But Pharaoh mocks God. Who is God that I should serve him? But my dear friend, God soon let Pharaoh know who exactly he was. You know, God sent 10 plagues upon the land of Egypt. And the last of them was the passing of the death angel through that land. The Lord told the children of Israel to shed the blood of the lamb and apply the blood to the doorposts. And God would stand guard over those doors. And so he did. The death angel passed through the land. But sad to say, the homes of the Egyptians, there was no blood applied. And the message was very simple. No blood, no salvation. Under the blood, secure. And thank God we are secure under the precious blood of Christ. In the book of Revelation, in the chapter 3, in the verse 8, it says, I have set before thee an open door. God's speaking to the church at Philadelphia. And God tells me, he says, I know all about your works. And it's good to know that God sees everything. But God says, I have set before thee an open door, a door of service, a door of opportunity. And God is going to use them mightily for his honour and for his glory. And the wonderful thought is this, when God opens a door, no man can shut it. Isn't it good to know that God's in control of the door of opportunity for you and me? But when God opens that door, my friend, you be sure to go through it. Go through with God thy vows to pay. The final one is in the book of Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25. And it tells us, and while he went to buy, the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Here's a door of separation. You see, those that were ready went in with him. There was a time when the door was open. People had opportunity to go in. But my friend, there came a time when the door was shut. Man could not enter in anymore. Those that did go in enjoyed the feast and the fellowship there of the marriage. But those that were not ready... They were shut outside. And you know, God will shut the door of opportunity one day. But praise God, if you go in through the door of salvation, you will go into heaven itself and sit down at the marriage supper of the Lamb and enjoy fellowship for all eternity. But God says, my spirit shall not always strive with man. The indifferent, the careless, the neglectful, 
the rejectors of God's salvation will be shut outside. Oh, I beg you in God's name, listen to the plead of the Spirit of God. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter, latter end. My dear friend, God is giving his children a door of opportunity of service. But he's standing at your door, sinner, and he's knocking. Will you let him in? Will you receive the Savior today? May God speak to your heart and bring you to himself. For Jesus' sake, Heavenly Father, bless thy word. To our hearts we pray. Help us to be obedient to thy truth. In Jesus' name, amen. From my heart to yours and home to yours, God bless you.